with the program, O Lord, we want your presence to be with us. Bless the ones that are believed. May thy comfort be always with us. May we also look forward to the resurrection that is awaiting for us. Prepare us to that event, because we pray in Jesus' name. Reading from 1 Corinthians, verses 51 through 58. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not, we shall not all sleep. Uh, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at, his, at the last trumpet, for the mortal shall, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this mortal, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So When, they, when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall the then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. <coughs> o death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives, giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, uh, beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. May the Lord bless you. This is a very common reading. Uh, that we do when we come into a situation like this uh, where we are gathered together to, to put our loved one to rest till the Lord comes. And it is uh, supposed to give us uh, comfort and hope uh, 
towards uh, uh, focusing towards uh, what will be when Christ comes uh, the second time. Paul says here, death is swallowed up in victory. And when we look into this, uh, into this, uh, this chapter, it says in the heading, our final victory. It is about victory over death. But there is a two part to it. When you really look at it, there is a part that we play and a part that God plays. In uh, verse 58, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that ye labor, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I was reading this. This is a part that we play in overcoming uh, the death. That is overcoming death, the, the final victory. But before that, there are some victories that we ought to have in our Christian life. I know Auntie is resting. Uh, she, the message is not for her. It is for us as we gather together these times and we reflect on our life and the life that we have in Christ and how we, uh, what kind of relationship that we have with Christ. And Paul tells us in order for us to have victory over death, which is the ultimate victory he's talking about, we ought to have victories in our Christian life. He says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain uh, in the Lord. As I reflect on uh, Auntie's uh, his life, I remember that uh, she always wanted to serve the Lord. Then uh, at church, she wanted to always teach the Sabbath school. She was she was teaching Sabbath school for a few years till she got ill. And whenever I visited her, she always wanted to get back. And she said, when I feel better, Sam, I will, I will come and teach, this, teach the children. That was her passion. Of course, you know, teaching was her passion. And she, knowing, all, knowing her, she had a great faith in God. Her faith was never, um, never shaken, never moved. She loved God. And we know that. We, Paul says that if we live a life like that, a life that is steadfast in Christ, having faith in Christ, and, and having the having a love for Christ, then, then uh, we will have victory over that. But it says in verse 57, thanks to our God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The victory cannot be obtained by us. It is only through Christ that we can obtain the victory. It is a gift to us from Christ. But it's a gift only if we live a life that is pleasing to Him. You see, we, we, could, we gather together here and, um, you know, we have many, many funerals here. We also always say, no, you know, that uh, God will raise uh, raise the, the love of our loved ones. But here's a condition on how we are to live our life in order for God to give us the, death, the victory over death. We are to live a life that is pleasing to us, that is uh, to, to Him. We are to live a life that He desires us at the end to wake us up and to take us to heaven. As I was contemplating today on this and uh, I was thinking, When God comes, when Christ comes the second time, would I be raised up? Would I be contributing something to heaven? Would Christ desire me to be with Him in heaven? See, um, we go through life, there are struggles that we go through. There are obstacles in the way, right? There are many obstacles that come in between the relationship that we have with God. The ultimate obstacle is death. But before that, there are many obstacles that we face. And it, unless we remove those and have an intimate relationship with God, that God will not remove the ultimate obstacle. The life that we live on earth, 
leads to a life that will lead to eternity. And it all depends on how we live our life. What kind of relationship that we have with God. In order for God to take the ultimate separation and restore us into a rightful relationship like the like Adam and Eve had before sin, we ought to develop an intimate relationship now as we live our life uh, with God. And then He would desire to take us home. My prayer for us all is that we live a life that is pleasing to God. Like Paul says, be steadfast, immovable, and do the work of the Lord and the will of the Lord. And that is what ultimately results in victory over death. In Genesis 3.19, it talks about the sin and how it separated and how God, God comes to Adam and Eve and says that you were created out of dust and to dust that you will go. And that is what is going to take place in all our lives when we come to a resting point. Right now, uh, Auntie is resting, but for a short time. I know the life that she lived, and uh, our prayer is that we will see her uh, at the second coming of Christ, when He calls out His loved ones. I imagine that many times, over and over again, the second coming of, uh, of Christ. Not only at times like this, but in my in my daily devotion and things like that. And I say, I am looking forward to a time where I can see Christ face to face, see His smiling face, and inviting us into His presence for eternity. For eternity. But there will be no more sorrow, there will be no more pain, there will be no more separation caused by sin or by death. We look forward to that day. We keep living a life faithful, steadfast, immovable in His presence all the time. And that would lead us into eternity, to happiness, life everlasting. That is my prayer for all of you. And right now, Uncle and I, as a symbol of uh, fasting, uh, dust to dust, I believe there is no. But we will take a flower from here. We have something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. God had said that He had created us from dust and to dust to we return. But we wait on Him for the day that you will be resurrected again and live with Him for eternity and to this fall. Let us pray. Our dear Father in heaven, the separation between you and us uh, is evident because of the death that we face. But Lord, I know, Father, that we, there comes a day when you're going to send your son and you're going to uh, blow the trumpet. He's going to blow the trumpet and when the trumpet is sounded, the dead in Christ will rise. That is what Paul says to us. So we look forward to the day that you will come and take us home for eternity. There will be no more sorrow, no more pain. But while we are still living on this earth, we suffer the loss, we suffer the pain, the separation. <coughs> so please, I pray that you will draw close to Vino, the Vinny, and the rest of the family. That you will put your arms around them as we grieve and comfort us. But come soon, Lord. But even coming soon, I pray that you would prepare us for your coming. Because we want to be ready to go and live with you for eternity. That is my prayer for all of us here today. And bless us, comfort us. In Jesus' name, amen. I might just let me speak, but I didn't bring it. I need a
Ladies and gentlemen, if you would uh, kindly wait, we're going to go ahead and lower the casket, then everybody can file by and drop them in, and we'll have the uh, spoils of the earth so you can uh, also place them in there. So it just take a few, a few minutes. Don't need to, nice and don't need to back over here. <laughs> it's got a little wet to it.